Hello and welcome to another episode of Two Straws. Two Straws! It's been a minute, but we're back here to break down UFC 230, Cormier versus Lewis in Madison Square Garden. Ooh, New York City! And today's Two Straws is a special edition because we, we got Halloween stuff because it's Halloween. Chicka cheese! Wee! Chicka cheese! Find my feet, give me something good to eat. If you don't, I don't care. I'll put down your underwear. <laughs> This part has been pieced together and put together with like different limbs of different fighters more than Frankenstein. Oh, this card sucks more than Dracula. Oh. This card is a ghost of its former self. Oh. This card's falling apart worse than a zombie. Uh. This card has changed more than a werewolf during a full moon. <laughs> This card's got less meat on it than a skeleton. This is the card. <laughs> so this is obviously our Halloween episode. It's it's almost Ooh. spooky time. How many people do you think are um, transitioning from Conor McGregor costumes to Khabib costumes oh, this year? Oh, the flip floppers. That's so rude. Yeah, no. I definitely think the Conor Khabib ratio has changed. Probably way more like fluffy hats or bear costumes rather than like the three piece button up suit. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know, you see a lot of grown men dressing like Conor McGregor like year round, so it's probably not going to be a difference for them. It was a good knock. No. It was a good knock. <laughs> it wasn't <your> toe. <laughs> the fight that I want to talk about first is um, Matafari versus. Um, Oh, uh, girl that Joe Rogan doesn't know who she is, but she almost fought for a title. Sajara Eubanks. Yeah. Yeah, that girl. Yeah, that one. In the flyweight division, we have an interesting matchup. This is the fight that, like, it, it's kind of like a title contention fight. We had um, Sajara Eubanks, who was actually, like, the winner of the Ultimate Fighter flyweight division. Um, and she was supposed to fight for a title, and she ended up missing weight. And mm -hmm. Matafari stepped in for her last minute against... <laughs> Uh, girl, the who champion. Got <laughs> <laughs> the champion. Girl who got injured, and everyone said she was scared of Valentina Shevchenko, so they took her title away. Yeah, that girl. Yeah. Anyway, so now <laughs> Modafari and <laughs> Eubanks are fighting. Yay! Hopefully, we'll get a title soon for that weight class. I mean, they need uh, one. It's a, everyone needs a goal <laughs> to work towards, and right now they're all kind of floating in the water with no life raft, just like kind of waiting. Oh, I'm getting for seasick. Oh, God. Some oh, God. big ship named the SS uh, title. Everyone's waiting for a champion to come out. Uh, I guess uh, Shevchenko versus Joanna is happening soon, so we'll see what happens with that. But uh, this is definitely a title contention fight. Yeah. So, yeah, they actually fought on the show, and uh, Roxanne has a lot of experience over Eubanks, but she was able to still get that win. So this is kind of a rematch, you know, tough tough fights don't really count, but then they also Everything do. counts. Everything counts. Everyone's counts. watching. As long as there's an audience, it Except counts. we didn't get paid for it, so. Oh. <laughs> Give me my money. It doesn't count. Carla didn't beat me. <laughs> she didn't beat me either. Yeah, fuck you, Carla. <laughs> Love you, Carla. Yeah. So I really like this matchup because we have Sajara Eubanks, who is, I've been watching her compete in grappling as a black belt for, for many, many years, and uh -huh. she is an absolute beast. Nice. And to see her kind of grow into her MMA game, she has great striking, takedown, submissions, or are off the chain, so I'm excited to see this matchup. Matafari, though, in her own right, she's judo, jujitsu, and a veteran in the sport. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm really excited to see this when they have both have their separate camps and everything's kind of like tuned in. Yeah, same here, same here. Matarafi is definitely like a, a comeback story that I love to follow. And then Sajara, she's uh, she's new to the UFC, but she's been working really hard. She's elite athlete, um, black belt, you know, jiu-jitsu, like you said. So, yeah, it's going to be a high-level fight, uh, despite the experience discrepancy. In the middleweight division, we have Derek Brunson versus Israel Adesanya. The last style bender. Woo! Woo! Yeah! Naruto 
Lego symbols. Yeah, I really like totally. that guy. Yeah, he's definitely <laughs> one of those new school, like, um, evolutionary kind of mm-hmm. athletes in the mixed martial arts scene. Um, a lot of people have, have really given him a lot of praise and are have, like, a lot of expectations of him coming into the UFC. Yeah, um, you know, a lot of people that can kind of hinder their growth, but he's totally embracing it. He still has his confidence with him. He looks very calm in there. Even when he faces a little adversity in the cage, he's able to uh, make some adjustments in between rounds. He's able to bend his style a bit in order to get that knockout or get like just a dominant performance win. So um so yeah, he's he's definitely on another level. I think confidence is key with him. Uh he goes in there ready to bang and he just kind of knows who he is as a fighter. It's something that a lot of us are are reaching for like trying to know ourselves and he seems like he has that part figured out. Definitely. Well, he is definitely taking on a tall order in Derek Brunson. Mm-hmm. Brunson has some amazing knockouts to his credit. Um, also, I, I feel like this fight is kind of setting Adesanya up for kind of a highlight reel if Derek Brunson doesn't play it smart and isn't um, rushing forward as much as he normally does. He's, he's felt that power in his punches. He knows what it is to get a knockout, and so sometimes he kind of rushes it. Mm-hmm. So hopefully we can see that adjustment from Derek Brunson in this fight. Exactly. We don't want to see what happened uh, when he fought Jacare uh, to happen again in this fight, but I really feel like um, Stylebender can get that done. You know, like, even if Derek Brunson isn't rushing forward in the beginning, uh, he has a good way of frustrating his opponents. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely a fight that I'm going to watch. I'll be on the edge of my seat, and who knows, maybe uh, Brunson can get the knockout too. We have another matchup in the middleweight division. We have Chris Weidman versus Jacare Souza. Oh, you mean Weidman? Hey, yo, Weidman. What's that going, Weidman? Things be alright down here at Sierra Longo in Long Island, man. You know the only team stronger than a crocodile, man. This week. So this fight was originally slated for Rockhold versus Weidman, mm-hmm. but Rockhold had to bow out, and now Jacare Souza, and now Jacare Souza is stepping in. <laughs> Are you done? Yeah. <laughs> How come I'm always smoking weed when we talk about Jacker? <laughs> I don't know. He, he brings it out in you. <laughs> Wait, but didn't Jacker fight Kelvin? Mm hmm. But then Weedman fought Kelvin and choked him out. But that doesn't mean that uh, Weedman will beat Jacker because MMA math. Does not exist. <laughs> and in the main event, we have Daniel Cormier taking on Derek Lewis for the heavyweight title. Oh, that's so interesting. Yay! <laughs> so, best way to get a title shot is to say you don't want a title shot, and then you get one next Six week. Go. <laughs> like, oh, cool! No, no, I'm no, fighting that guy. No, no, I'm it. fighting that guy. Yeah, yeah, it's worth go. It looks like, uh, I think most people are going to be expecting Cormier to get a pretty easy win off of Derek, over Derek Lewis. But, you know, he always has that one punch knockout power. Uh, We've seen Cormier get dropped in the past by uh, John Jones, and we know that it can happen. So there's still that mystique about this fight. You know, Derek Lewis is still going to be like kind of bruised up from his last fight. It was literally only a few weeks ago, but you know he has that power, and you know he can use it. So it's still it's still interesting to see what happens. Definitely. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> I got nothing. So we've just gotten word that Brock Lesnar will be cage side for this fight. Oh, yay. And if I know this WWE superstar, Mr. Brock Lesnar, he's definitely be brought into the center of the cage and try and do some WWE type showman storyline, ruining the moment kind of thing, as he's done before. Wait, but if you think about it, if you take... WWE, and you flip the W. Yeah. It starts off as W. You get WME. 
I don't think that Lewis is going to be as excited as Cormier was to get pushed by Brock Lesnar. <laughs> I don't think so. So I kind of want Lewis to win just to see that moment just happen. Just to see that interaction would be yeah. like classic. Hopefully he won't be wearing any pants. <laughs> that happen. <laughs> Please let Derek Lewis <laughs> win and get his balls hot again. <laughs> also, John Jones will be in attendance that night in spirit because he haunts Daniel Cormier's every waking moment. It's sad and it's true. Poor Cormier. Another interesting thing that happened was uh, Demetrius Johnson got traded for Ben Askren. Wait, what? So Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, how does that even... What? That's a thing. That's that, not a thing. How does that... That's, no, that's I a I guess trick. that's a thing now. Um, doesn't matter, I guess, weight class or contract, but uh, Mighty Mouse got moved to 1FC, and then Ben Askren is being brought over to the what UFC. What the fuck? How did that happen? Where have I been? You could say that Dana White's convictions are unraveling faster than a mummy. <laughs> I mean, realistically, they should have, like, traded two flyweights for one Ben Askren because, I mean, they, two of them would fit in one shipping container over yeah. that way. Throw, them in, throw another one in there. <laughs> just, just give him another one. <laughs> Maybe Wilson will go to. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for another episode of Two Straws. Two Straws. Don't forget to catch UFC 230. November 3rd, Madison Square Garden, we have Cormier versus Lewis as the main event. And Brock Lesnar's going to be in the background. Cage side. Yeah. Last time we had some big apes stomping around New York like that was uh, when King Kong climbed up the Empire State Building. <laughs> me like, lady. <laughs> <laughs>